More now uh, on the plight of girls and women in Afghanistan one year after the U.S. withdrawal and the Taliban takeover. Sanam Nanoghi Anderlini is the founder and CEO of the International Civil Society Action Network, or ICANN, which provides critical support for Afghan women. She's also director of the Center for Women, Peace and Security at the London School of Economics. Sanam, welcome to the program. Your organization has done so much for Afghan families, Afghan women, those trying to get out of the country last year. When you talk to the women who are still in Kabul and the surrounding areas throughout the country, what are they telling you about how their life has changed? Uh, I, th I think between this time last year and this, the, the last 12 months, it is inconceivable for, for so many of them. And I say this because you know, people say, well, this is turning back the clock to, you know, when, when the Taliban was in power in the 1990s. But we have to remember that Afghanistan is a very young country. Um, over 60 percent of the population is under the age of 25. Over 40 percent are under 14. They don't know what it was like during the Taliban in the past. They've grown up with the television and journalism and media and going to school. And yes, there was the war and there, there's, there, there was the violence that, that was, was going on. But they had these freedoms, and it, it, what the, the future that they're looking at is so bleak, it, it's hard to imagine for anyone, I think, outside the country. Afghanistan, as you know, is currently the only country in the world that denies teenage girls the right to education. They had promised, the Taliban had promised to open these secondary schools back in March. As you know, it did not happen because, in their words, the conditions were not right. What are those conditions, according to the Ministry of Vice and Virtue, if you will? I, I don't think that they're ever going to have the right conditions. I don't think they ever planned or anticipated having women back in public life the way that they, they basically claimed that they would in, in the Doha process. And, you know, what's, what's really tragic here is that Afghan women knew this. Afghan women warned the world. Afghan women insisted repeatedly to have a chance to be in the Doha peace talks whether that the Qataris were, were hosting and that the US was was you know enabling and, and the international community was present at and they were stonewalled out of those talks and and so this to me has, has been one of the questions that I, I asked people the diplomats that were there I asked them you know looking back if Afghan women had been present would we have the conditions that we have now and, and they all look at me and they say no absolutely not so it was a travesty on the part of the United Nations on the part of the United States especially and and those who enabled it the Qataris I think need to be considered in this they hosted they, they let the Taliban live there for many many years and and gave them a level of credibility so um, you know there's no accountability now and yet Afghan women were warning about these issues from a very long time ago so, Sana, moving forward, what does the international community need to be doing to make sure Afghan women can work and teenage girls can go to school? I think, I think there are a number of things. Number one, you know, on very basic levels. At the moment, there's a debate about whether the Taliban should be uh, permitted to travel abroad. And Afghan women's organizations and Afghan activists have been saying, no, they should, there should be a travel ban on the Taliban, and especially so because they've also banned... Afghan uh, teenagers and, and university students who wanted to travel abroad to go study, they banned them from traveling. So they're saying, if we're not allowed to travel, the Taliban shouldn't be allowed to travel. The second thing is the question of West, you know, funding that, that comes from the international community. We have been systematically saying humanitarian aid that's going in must be gender responsive. It must include women as deliverers of aid and as recipients of aid. Um, is that happening? No. So, you know, is the Taliban going to allow that to happen and, and, and make sure that the aid comes in? That, that I think, is a, is a, is a really um, essential part of this, this question as well. So there are different ways in which the international community can be playing its role um, to enable the voices of women. And frankly, Afghan women who are living inside the country are saying, we need spaces for the dialogue. We do need to talk to each other. And yet, repeatedly, we see international actors going in, talking to the Taliban or inviting the Taliban out, but not actually including Afghan women still, even, even with the events that, that, that are taking place. So th there's, there, are, there are different things that could be done, and yet they're really not being done in any systematic way. Sanam Narogi Anderlini, thank you very much.